You want to talk extreme Master Chef moments? Hmm. 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 Sorry, something was stuck in my throat there. As I was saying, extreme Master Chef moments. Yeah. Yeah. Well, boy, have I got more than a few of them for you today. And they've also got some extreme life lessons to give along the way. Uh, okay, okay, putting away the Randy Savage voice for good now. Uh, let's get into it before I embarrass myself any further. Now, in season six, Tommy decided to give the judges the scare of their lives. I can't wait to see inside there. You see, at first, he started off by trying to defend his creation, going on about how it was infused with green tea leaves and boasting about the color and perfume of the pistachio and oranges. I mean, come on, Tommy, are you for real? But there he was, weirdly cocky, like he had just crafted the eighth wonder of the culinary world or something. Create a symphony for your mouth. Now, the judges were all giving each other these puzzled looks, like they had just stumbled into some alternate universe where cinnamon rolls come in shades of green and taste like a bizarre mix of tea and citrus. So it's not gonna come out great, but hold it's on. always number two and number three. To me, that's like cold medicine for when I'm on vocal rest, so you can probably imagine how well that went down. One mouth for that, and I'm sure I'll be going for number two. But here's the kicker. Despite all the bravado, when the judges finally took a bite, they weren't exactly gagging, but they weren't exactly singing Tommy's praises either. <laughs> Ramsey managed to choke out something about it tasting decent, but then he took one more look at those rolls and you could practically see the disappointment seeping into his soul. And don't even get me started on Katrina. <laughs> and Katrina is laughing. That girl's laughter is so contagious, I swear. She's practically doubled over trying to hold it together as Tommy dug himself deeper and deeper into this cinnamon roll disaster. And you could tell she was loving every minute of it. Probably because she knew she was up next and she wasn't about to make the same mistake. It's not my best. That should come with a, a health warning. As for Tommy, well, let's just say he was feeling the heat. He went from cocky to embarrassed in the span of a few seconds. The realization that maybe, just maybe, he might have oversold those cinnamon rolls started to hit him like a ton of bricks. But hey, that's the beauty of MasterChef, right? It's all about taking risks, pushing boundaries, and sometimes falling flat on your face. And sure, Tommy's cinnamon rolls might not have been the culinary masterpiece he thought they were, but you gotta give the guy credit for trying. But now, this next moment has to be one of my favorite moments of all time. So I'm talking about Charlie. And the dude marched up to the judges like he cooked up the Mona Lisa of cakes. But when he unveiled it from under that dome with a flourish, oh boy, it was like watching a train wreck in slow motion. As for the cake, well, it looks like it had been through hell and back. I'm talking tilted candles, lopsided layers, the whole shebang. Imagine the saddest birthday cake in the world. Now, turn it up to 11, and this was even worse than that. It was so bad, you could almost feel sorry for the poor thing. Now, picture the judges' faces. They were trying to keep it together, but you could tell they were struggling not to grimace, laugh, gasp, cry, or express any other emotion than excitement. I mean, who wouldn't? This cake was like something out of a baking horror movie. Meanwhile, everyone else's cakes were sitting there looking all pristine and perfect, making Charlie's disaster stand out even more like a sore thumb. Ice, and this is really good. It'd be good if I was blind. <laughs> but this is where things get interesting. Yeah, this wasn't even the most interesting part. Instead of cowering in shame like most sane people would, Charlie decided to double down. <laughs> it tastes really good though, chef, I promise you. He straight up told the judges that his cake was better enjoyed blindfolded. I kid you not. Talk about a Hail Mary pass. So against all odds, Ramsey decided to humor him and took a bite as everyone questioned Ramsey's decision to go ahead. Well, it's pretty. <laughs> but guess how it turned out. It's delicious. I'm talking mind-blowingly delicious, people. Like, did we just step into some parallel universe where messed up cakes were the new gourmet trend? It was a plot twist nobody saw coming, and you could bet your bottom dollar that everyone's jaws were on the floor. <laughs> Come on, don't even hang it. <laughs> but hey, that's this show in a nutshell. Just when you think you've seen it all, they throw you a curveball that knocks you off your feet. 
So here's to you, Charlie, for being so cocky that it wrapped around and became perfect, suave confidence. And to Ramsey for proving once again that even he can be surprised, even if he won't admit it without a sly dig or two. You have to have the ugliest cake tonight, not just in the MasterChef kitchen. But up next, Christopher strutted up to the judge's table with his potato dumpling dish, feeling like he was about to serve up a slice of culinary heaven. But oh, how the mighty fall. Christina took one bite and immediately dropped a bomb. The inside of those dumplings could rival the Sahara Desert for dryness, and don't even get her started on the lack of seasoning, because yeah, it's always the seasoning. It was about as thrilling as watching paint dry on a Sunday afternoon. The potato dumpling filling tastes a little dry. Now, most people in Christopher's shoes would probably take that feedback and maybe, I don't know, take it in stride, consider it, I don't know, but not our boy Christopher. Oh no, he was over there acting like he was wearing earplugs, standing all cool and collected like nothing could faze him. Christopher. But just when he thought he was in the clear, in came Gordon Ramsay to rain on his parade. Uh, ant infestation? <laughs> Ramsey took one look at that plate and he was off to the races, tearing into Christopher's dish left, right, and center. I'm not allowing the customer to see that that's not what I did. Okay. I mean, seriously, who in their right mind seasons a dish with black pepper on a white plate? I mean, white pepper exists for a reason, but it's like he was trying to turn his food into an art installation with dust and dirt as the main exhibit. And while Ramsey was going to town on the seasoning disaster, you could practically see Christopher rolling his eyes so hard, they might just roll right out of his head. The stars. Christina wasn't having any of it. She was quick to call him out on his blatant disrespect, telling him that if he was gonna sass the judges, he might as well pack his bags and hit the road right there. We say we see everything, we mean it. But let's pause for a moment and reflect, shall we? Don't be disrespectful. These judges aren't just any old folks off the street, they're the cream of the crop in the food world. I can hold that back door open for you if you want, we don't even have to taste on these dishes. They got more experience in their pinkies than most of us could even dream of. And here was Christopher, acting like he knew better than them. It was like challenging Michael Jordan to a game of one-on-one -on -one and expecting to come out on top. Not the smartest move, buddy. Dude, look who's standing in front of you. So, what's the moral of this spicy tale? Well, I don't really know, but for starters, maybe don't sass the judges when they're trying to help you improve. And secondly, always, always listen to Ramsey when it comes to the seasoning. Because let's face it, if anyone knows how to spice things up, it's him. So here's hoping Christopher learned his lesson before he found himself on the chopping block, both figuratively and literally. All right, no more messing around on my end. I got this killer MasterChef moment coming straight in from Canada. So this moment is part cute, part eerie, and all kinds of interesting. Yeah, without context, I'd be confused too, so stick with me here. So when the clock started ticking on the challenge, right off the bat, Chef Alvin headed straight for Kimberly like a heat-seeking missile. Now, that's enough to make anyone's heart skip a beat, but what happened next was really interesting. Chef Alvin started chatting up Kimberly about what she was whipping up, and here's the kicker. He looked a lot like someone from Kimberly's life, spitting image territory. So naturally, Chef Alvin, being funny for a change, went up to talk to her about it. Hi, Kimberly. Hi. I heard I remind you of someone. Cue the collective say what now? Everyone within earshot. Was that supposed to be a compliment or a subtle roast? Uh, is anyone's guess at this point? Is that, is, it, is, it, is that a compliment? <laughs> it's definitely uh, how, it's how a compliment. Like but hold on, guys, because Kimberly wasn't done yet. She went on to explain that, just like her mom, Chef Alvin had this knack for pushing her to do better, even if it meant tough love sometimes. And suddenly, it all made sense. Well, sort of. You, if you don't do right, I will yell at you. <laughs> then came the plot twist, and Chef Alvin decided to play along. Instead of brushing off Kimberly's comparison like some might, he embraced it in his own playful way. He encouraged her to channel her mom's spirit oh. into her cooking and gave her that extra push she needed to shine. My mom would make me chicken rice. Chicken wow. rice. But this is where things got real sweet. What Kimberly was whipping up wasn't just any old dish. It was inspired by her mom's cooking. It was like a culinary love letter straight from the heart. And suddenly, Chef Alvin's resemblance to her mom wasn't so eerie after all. 
sounds downright heartwarming. Okay, do not fail me, your mom. <laughs> so what's the takeaway from this adorable yet slightly spooky MasterChef moment? Well, for starters, never underestimate the power of a familiar face to inspire you. And secondly, sometimes the most unexpected connections can lead to the most delicious results. But oh man, while I'm at it, let me tell you about this MasterChef Season 8 salmon saga that was the stuff of legend. So picture this, the contestants were all sweating bullets because they had been tasked with the ultimate challenge, whipping up a killer salmon dish in just 60 minutes. And the tension was real for sure, but this is where things got real juicy. Or should I say fishy? Jeff, bless his heart, was completely worked up. I mean, the guy was practically pacing a hole in the floorboards. And after all that, he served up his salmon to the judges. Cue the collective gasps and face palms from everyone within a 10 mile radius. There, with a little bit of the feta cheese and sundry tomato relish, that's over a nice apple. Cue the collective gasps and face palms from everyone within a 10 mile radius. Now, if you thought Ramsey was scary before, just wait till you see him when he was faced with a plate of salmon for the umpteenth time. Let's just say Jeff got an earful. I tried to poison me. And then some. But hey, you live and you learn, right? Hopefully Jeff took that feedback with a pinch of salt, or in this case, a dash of lemon. After that, when the judges got together to decide the fate of the contestants, there was some crazy banter going on outside. I'm talking jokes flying left and right, snarky comments ricocheting off the wall. No. Couldn't be. Yeah, I don't know when this episode turned into a comedy show, but here we are. <laughs> and let me tell you, these contestants weren't holding back. From playful jabs at each other's taste buds to comparing contestants to ingredients, nothing was off limit. Well, go make a wet. And believe me, you wouldn't see any of this coming. Oh, yourself. <laughs> okay, tell me you didn't expect that. But wait, there's more. Thousand dollars up to your therapist or to you. But what really took the cake, or should I say, the salmon, was when they started riffing on Jeff's infamous fish fiasco. I mean, come on. What was he planning to do here? And don't even get me started on Ramsey's reaction. The dude was ready to erupt. But hey, amidst all the laughter and jokes, there was a serious decision that still needed to be made. And when the dust settled, someone had to go home. Or, uh, some ones in this case. Yeah, of course Jeff was doomed with all the nonsense he'd pulled, but poor Yashika got caught in the crossfire. Now, I'm sure the judges had their reasons, but let me know if you want me to cover more of her story down in the comments. Because, in my opinion, it's a story that definitely needs telling. Super underrated contestant, and if things had gone a little differently for her, I could have seen her in the finale alongside my boy Dino. But that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes, I guess. You see, in the whirlwind world of culinary competitions like MasterChef, there are highs, lows, and everything in between. But now and then, there's this moment that just stops everyone dead in their tracks. In the second season of the show, one such moment happened when Jenny Kelly presented her creation, a coffee-infused tart. It is a tart. I infused the tart with coffee. Now, let's set the scene. The judges, including the tried-and-true and formidable duo of Joe and Ramsey, were ready to taste the next culinary masterpiece coming their way. But when Jenny's tart was placed in front of them, there was a collective gasp. Oh no, it wasn't the pretty sight you'd expect from a tart. Instead of the golden crust and perfectly set filling, it was, well, kinda hideous. I mean, it was definitely not what a tart should look like. But Joe decided to take the plunge and taste it anyway. But as soon as he cut into it, there was a problem. It's not cooked all the way through, I put it in too late. So it's raw. Yeah, no points for guessing it was undercooked. Jenny, to her credit, owned up to it. She admitted she put it in late, and do I even have to explain what that means? Well, it was basically raw. I mean, serving up undercooked food on a show like MasterChef? That's a cardinal sin. Something this home cook right here had absolutely no problem committing. Well, the, the opposite of being cooked is raw, right? So, let's sure. raw. But Joe soldiered on taking a bite and promptly gagged. Yeah, it was that bad. Ugh. And when Ramsey decided to give it a try, the disappointment was written all over his face. It's an embarrassment. 
Danny wasn't wrong. A tart is not meant to be undercooked. It's meant to be a symphony of flavors and textures with that perfect balance of sweetness and pastry crispy goodness. Serving up something undercooked not only ruins the dish, but come on. Undercooked eggs mean salmonella, anyone? In any sense, you'd stage a trip up and smash the plate on the way up here. That's when the judges decided they had enough. They sent the dish back and addressed everyone. Contestants, sure, but viewers alike, too. I'm really sorry. At this stage of the challenge, when there's only this many of you left... This isn't what MasterChef is about. It was a wake-up call, a reminder that they needed to step up their game if they wanted to stay in the running. Putting up food that's not cooked. See the frustration on their faces as they spoke. The judges have dedicated their lives to food, to creating dishes that delight and inspire. And to see it all go to waste because someone couldn't be bothered to cook their tart properly, it was enough to make them want to throw in the towel then and there. You guys shine, and f me do we want you to shine. I swear to God. Because, like, at that point, serving nothing and saying what you made wasn't worthy of them would have been less of an insult, right? Well, either way, with the judges simmering in their frustration and disappointment, it felt like the whole kitchen was holding its breath. You could see it in their eyes. The anger, the exasperation. They weren't just mad at Jenny for serving up that disastrous tart, they were mad at everyone. It was the straw that broke the camel's back, the moment where they really felt like calling it quits. Oh, to me, that was one of the most extreme moments in MasterChef history, considering they had to pause everything and lay down the law. Because in the end, it's not just about the food, it's about the journey. And what a journey it's been. For better or worse, but leave it to MasterChef to be the only show on the planet that can make its most extreme moments have a little bit more substance to them. Can you think of more times when things spiraled out of control on MasterChef? And maybe taught us all a lesson at the same time? Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications too. Also, if you thought this video was crazy, then make sure to check out this next post right here. It's even better.